Americans love to use smartphones and thieves love to steal them. There is a growing black market for the devices. And now cell phone carriers and the government are trying to fight back. Seth Doan is actually riding the rails. He's on the subway on the 7 train here in New York where smartphone theft is a huge problem. Seth, good morning. Good morning, Erica and Charlie. Right now, about half of all thefts on these New York City subways involve electronic devices like the Apple iPhone. And that rise in stolen phones has prompted the NYPD to add hundreds of additional transit cops on these trains where commuters are easy targets. This surveillance video from inside a subway station in Washington, D.C., showed a sting operation by D.C. Metro Transit Police. A decoy lay motionless on the platform, easy prey for a thief who approached and snatched a cell phone before being arrested by plainclothes police. It's the type of crime that's so common it's easy to find even on YouTube. iPhones and smartphones nowadays are like catnip for criminals. They're valuable, they're exposed, they're easy to steal. Which is why U.S. Senator Charles Schumer and NYPD okay. Commissioner Ray Thank Kelly announced an agreement coming. between the I FCC so and the nation's cellular providers to create a database that would be used to permanently disable stolen smartphones. We intend to make the black market for cell phones a black hole for would-be thieves and criminals. If the unique ID number of a stolen phone is added to the national database, all major U.S. service providers would know not to activate the phone. Cell phone theft in New York City jumped from 8% of robberies 10 years ago to more than 40% today. Lost and stolen phones are the number one problem facing mobile users today. And anything we can do to reduce the incentive for thieves to steal phones is a good thing. Kevin Mahaffey is the founder of the San Francisco-based company Lookout, which created a free app to protect user data and locate lost phones. He says even a disabled cell phone still has value. What this still does allow would be devices potentially connecting to the Internet via Wi-Fi or being resold overseas in international markets. Senator Schumer will introduce legislation that would make it a federal crime to tamper with a cell phone's unique ID number one punishable by up to five years in prison. In many ways, the U.S. is behind the curve on these databases, as databases already exist in countries like Australia and in many parts of Europe. It'll take about 18 months for all of the phones in the U.S. to be added on the database, but most will be on in the next six months. So, Seth, what's next in this process of trying to clamp down on this? Well, Charlie, for consumers, they won't need to do a thing. Your phone already has one of these unique identifying numbers. The carrier already knows that. It's just a matter of getting it all together on one database so that cell phone providers can alert each other if someone's phone is indeed stolen. I'm sure, Seth, of course, there's always a concern that thieves could get around certain things. So in the interim, what do we need to do as consumers to protect ourselves? Well, it's really just common sense, and that's a big part of it. That's what Ray Kelly, the NYPD commissioner, was saying yesterday. It's things like don't have your cell phone in just one hand. If you're on a train, use it in two hands. In a lot of cases, you have people just snatching a phone and then walking out one of these doors. Also, just keeping it in your pocket, keeping it out of plain sight. It's, it's simple things like that that can really get to the bottom. All right, Seth, thank you. Interesting, by the way, you're taking the train out there to City Field where there's a game at 1 o'clock today. For the Mets, Seth, thanks. I know, right? We're heading to Shea Stadium, exactly. <laughs>